I'm Brian Sears with North Avenue Nation, and today I'm here with John Metaxas, financial journalist and broadcaster, to talk a little bit about the recent Greek riots in Athens and the austerity bill that was passed that had caused that. So, uh, hello, John. Hello, Brian. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being on. Um, so, we're going to get right into it. Obviously, you have heard about what happened uh, over the weekend in Athens, specifically. Um, there were 45 buildings burned. Uh, some of them to the ground. There was uh, 80,000 people in the streets, and it was all a result of the most recent austerity measure that the Greek Parliament passed. Um, do you know some of the contents of, of what's in this bill that possibly, I mean, caused such a thing? Obviously, there's a direct relationship. Well, the, the Greek people are suffering right now from a, uh, from an economy that's in a severe slump, and uh, the thought is that the austerity measures that Greece is having to agree to in order to get this bailout money are going to make the economic conditions even worse right now in Greece. Uh, some people are going hungry. There are soup kitchens even in some of the mid-sized cities. People are losing their jobs. They can't find work. There's a, a lot of anger in the country as to how they got into this situation. And uh, there's a belief uh, by many in Greece that, uh, that the austerity that is being imposed on them by the rest of Europe is, is too austere. That being said, there were peaceful protesters uh, outside the parliament on Sunday, and uh, from the reports that I read, they were having a peaceful protest, but then anarchists and communists came in and, and it turned violent. So uh, there, is a, there is an element in Greece uh, that uh, does take uh, political demonstrations to a violent level. But I don't think that reflects the whole population. That reflects a small subset. But obviously, uh, with the damage that was done, they create the headlines. Now, um, with the, the Greek debt crisis, which is probably the worst within Europe, um, there's people who are trying to search for the responsibility of basically what caused it. So do you believe it's, uh, I mean, the Greek people and how they spend and save their money? Is it the Greek government and how they spend and save their money? Or is it even larger now with the European Union being a huge financial factor in all countries really involved in the Union? Well, obviously some sense of responsibility goes on the leadership of Greece over the past 10 years in allowing the situation to deteriorate uh, to this level and in, in effect, if you will, uh, not being totally honest with the numbers they were reporting to Europe uh, and with, uh, and, and, and with uh, the, uh, the, the spending and the policies that they implemented. That being said, there are many who contend that the problem really goes back to uh, a European financial setup that uh, really was not coherent enough and not suited for a country like Greece. When Greece entered the euro, they effectively signed on for a hard currency, uh, much along the model of the German Deutsche Mark, and, and a hard currency policy that doesn't necessarily suit uh, countries in the Mediterranean area. Let me try to put that in layman's terms. If you're a country that um, relies on tourism, as Greece does, for much of your uh, uh, much of your income, much of your industry, you don't really want an expensive currency. You want it to be yeah. inexpensive so that people can come and spend uh, money in your country. What ended up happening is they got, they got stuck with, with a very expensive currency. Prices went up tremendously in Greece. It became less competitive with other tourist destinations. That was only one of the, the issues. The other issue is that when uh, uh, a nation uh, comes under economic difficulties, one solution is to devalue their currency. And this is what happened in Argentina and other countries that had uh, similar situations. United States. But because Greece is now tied to the euro, they cannot devalue their currency. When you devalue your currency, your exports become cheaper, it generates more business activity, and you can start to come out of a slump. But because there are other parts of Europe that do not want a cheap currency, like Germany and some of the northern nations. They want a strong currency. Greece does not have that, uh, that tool, if you will, mm -hmm. to help them get out of the crisis. So consequently, the only tool they have are budget cuts and austerity to try to, to um, lessen their deficit and, and pay back their debt. 
And that feeds on itself in, in a vicious cycle in which the economy continues to contract, people lose jobs, uh, tax revenues fall because there is less economic activity, and the country doesn't have the resources with which to pay back the debt. And, it, and the situation becomes worse through austerity rather than better. Okay. Now, um, this is obviously a pattern that is being seen globally in different, in varying uh, levels in varying places. You have Occupy Wall Street, which is a, a completely national and really international movement. They have Occupy London. I know they have uh, branches of it in Canada. But uh, there's also the what's happening in Greece, but even more violent measures of, of I mean, po protests that turned revolution in Syria and Egypt. Do you think that this is um, a reflection of, of people's, the general public's upset with globally their uh, establishments, their, their institutions of enforcement? I think there's some of that. I also think that uh, many of these uh, movements, uh, while they have a generalized anger, there are different reasons for the different movements. Uh, one thing that does uh, tie the world together is uh, in the last uh, 20 years or so we've had the creation of all of these financial instruments and, uh, and uh, the collateralized debt obligations and um, other instruments that have destabilized the financial system and uh, as, as, as there is a, a pressure on economies uh, the Occupy Wall Street, I think, movement is tapping into the fact that the, uh, the resources of the economy have been distributed more towards the wealthy and less towards the so-called 99 percent. Mm -hmm. And the disparity between the wealthy and the middle class and the poor has grown over the last generation in our country. So in a period of contracting economies, those pressures are felt much more strongly. And Occupy Wall Street is, is tapping into that. I think the Tea Party movement is tapping into part of that too, because the Tea Party movement is looking at taxes uh, that that are rising on, on on average people, and they think that government spending needs to be reined reined in because taxes are rising. Mm -hmm. But of course, all this is due to the fact that there's a uh, there's a contracting economic situation. Now, there are a lot of reasons here in the United States why we have that. Uh, you know, we had surpluses uh, all throughout the 90s, and then we financed uh, two wars, and we financed the tax cut, and we had, didn't really have the money to pay for that, so now deficits are huge. And then the destabilization of the financial system uh, necessitated a bailout for that, which further uh, uh, worsened uh, the budget crisis mm -hmm. in this country. So there are a lot of factors going into this. Uh, the issue in the Arab world, that may be different. That may be more political it's, and yeah. national than economic, but economics does play a big role in that as well because there are many people in those societies who don't have the economic opportunity and, and they see the problem as uh, the lack of democracy in, in their countries. So there is a tie in and many of these, but many of these movements are different. Well, uh, thank you very much, John. It was a wonderful interview. So uh, I hope to hear from you soon and thank you again.